Welcome friends, it's Kaylee Bird and I am excited to share with you today my first steps of van building and some exciting campouts and adventures and things I've already been doing. Yes, I get to hang out with a whole bunch of miniature donkeys and some chickens for the next six weeks, so I'm pretty excited. I'm here in Tennessee and I cannot wait to tell you guys about the adventures and stuff I've already been doing and what's here to come. So make sure you pop that subscribe button and stay up with all the artsy adventures. Yay! Thank you. In order to prep out Vaughn the Adventure Van, I went ahead and had the dealership permanently remove the third row of seats so I would have a great storage well under there. And lucky for me, my mom is quite the woodworker and has all the tools. So we got right to work as soon as we could building up my elevated bed. Now we actually used this old interior door from when my mom had re renovated her house that she no longer needed. She also happened to have a lot of other small scrap woods and things. So we really only had to buy just some metal L-shaped pieces and screws and glue and a few minor things like that. But for the most part, this bed was completely put together over things we already had. Score. Because I've decided to do all of Vaughn's components completely removable, I got this super gnarly rubber that I've attached to all the bottoms to save the carpeting, as well as the corners to save my shins. And um, hello, can you say engineering geniuses? Because my mom and I practically are after coming up with this incredible folding desk that I can set up in the passenger seat whenever I've pulled over for the night so I can whip out my computer and get all my good stuff done. Hello, YouTube editing. How sweet is this ride, right? Easy as pie, right? Um, actually, it took a bit of planning, but you know, I do love doing a good session of brainstorming with my mama. To create my custom mattress, I purchased a king-sized four inch thick gel memory foam mattress topper. I traced out the pattern of my exact bed shape and then cut it out twice, creating an eight inch thick memory foam mattress. This is the satisfaction smile of a girl who has just cut her first mattress. Using the leftover strip of memory foam and an unused floor length curtain from my mom's house, I upholstered a long cushion to go along the back wall of my bed so it would be a nice comfy couch. Look at those ends. Oh baby. Oh my goodness, your girl is cruising in so much comfort and style. Woo woo! So thrilled I had an excuse to hit the road right after building up Vaughn. On my way up to Tennessee for my next residency, I stopped at the cutest place, Kokomo Farms, in northern Florida that I found through the app Hip Camp. They had these chickens and guinea hens and the friendliest horses. You guys, it's been such a long time since I pet a horse. It was so exciting to have them run right up to me, so excited. And we'll just pretend it wasn't because they were expecting to get a carrot because, uh, yeah, if there's anything I learned from hanging out at Kokomo Farms, it's that animals seem to really like you when you feed them and can definitely tend to get a little standoffish when you don't. And guess what else lovely Kokomo Farms offers? I'll give you one hint. It's your birdie's favorite. Oh yes, outdoor bathrooms for the win every time. And when you've got a great outdoor toilet, you know what else you need? A nice, hot, steamy outdoor shower. Oh yes, how else are you going to admire the view of your yurts every morning? And I love that they're a low waste place. So they have all these great soaps for us to use. Oh my goodness, I am the luckiest birdie ever. They also provided the most adorable art wall with paint set out so you could contribute as well as a hot tub. I wasn't able to enjoy either on this trip, but next time, oh, I know where I'll be spending my time. Now, even though I didn't stay the night here, you know I come from treehouse people, so I had to share. I have never seen a treehouse made from a downed tree. You notice how the branches go from right to left? It was really enchanting and magical and beautiful. Imagine coming up here, walking up the stairs, snuggling up to bed, and there is a literal tree branch going right through your bedroom. I think it made for a very cozy setting. I really liked it. And there were even ferns that were alive on the branch. It was all 
in screen though so it was definitely not a warm place to be in the colder weather but hey on a summer day you really couldn't beat that spot so it's a good thing I keep Vaughn at a snuggle factor of 10 because sometimes it's a little bleak when you arrive yeah this camp spot in Tennessee at a state park was a little less than ideal luckily I was the only one in there which prevented me from being only eight feet from my neighbors and all I've got to say is when life hands you lemons, hopefully it also hands you a sense of power because I just busted out my trusty extension cord, let it right up to Vaughn, and provided myself a very cozy little evening, making myself a delicious veggie dinner and watching a little stand-up. I mean, honestly, I could not wish for anything more. So I woke up here in Tennessee. Woohoo! Um, it is definitely a little chilly out, but nothing I can't handle. I am very, very snuggly. I'm actually like... It's, it, totally warm. I actually got a little hot in the night, if you can believe it. Uh, but unfortunately, I was planning to go hiking today, but it is a little bit rainy out. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing a lot of hiking today, unfortunately. I mean, you know I got my rain boots on my winter or my rain jacket, but it's just, you know, it's one thing when you go hiking and it's like, potential of rain and it starts raining while you're out there then you're like oh, I can deal but I don't like to start a hike in the rain then you just are like this is my life <laughs> then it's a chore so unfortunately uh, I had mapped out like two different hikes I want to do today but I don't think it's gonna happen so you know you gotta go roll with the punch. I did really enjoy taking my time driving through small town Tennessee though so adorable so classic but I'm not going to lie, when it started snowing, I got a little nervous because it's been a while since I've driven or even really been in snow. But you know what they say, over the river and through the woods, <laughs> I managed to get here okay. But, oh, joyful me. Once again, I arrive and there are farm animals running up to greet me. I could really get used to this. Only this time, it's miniature donkeys. Can you believe it? So cute! I'm very excited to be here. I just arrived at my second artist residency here in Tennessee, but for the sake of brevity, I will save all the info about this visit for another video. I am just so happy to be here and get settled in. Take a minute to kind of share a little bit about my expectations as well as my experiences um, doing the whole van life thing. So, uh, for one, my experiences. So, two other times in my life, once when I was 20 years old and once when I was about 27, I lived in a van for four months. Um, each time was with a different, different ex-boyfriend, and um, we traveled the country. The first time we followed the dead, we did the whole dead tour. We saw like 35 shows over about four months. Each, each time was about four months and I went all over the country, California and back to the East Coast. It was absolutely insane. And I was 20 and we were like, oh my gosh, we, oh, we're so poor. But it was just like, gotta get to the next show, gotta get to the next show. And then the second time I did it was, um, with a different ex-boyfriend and this was when I was uh, doing the crafter vendor thing when I was uh, selling sock monsters and my like handmade clothes and all that kind of stuff traveling around doing that and so we did again another almost four months in a van and we went all the way to uh, Colorado Wyoming and back so not quite to California but pretty far um, over about four months and um, that time we were actually making money we were working on the road we had arch together you know what I mean like we knew what we were doing we knew how to pack so I have definitely, and, oh, and besides that, I have done dozens and dozens of road trips back and forth across the U.S., up and down the East Coast, halfway this way, south way. Like I have, I've probably been to probably 47 or 48 states. Alaska and Maine are the only two off the top of my head that I have not been to. Um, so yeah, I've done a lot a lot of road tripping and traveling and stuff over the years which has prepared me for now being able to take on this challenge by myself you know if I hadn't done so many years of traveling either very ill-equipped and very well equipped and everywhere in between you know I wouldn't really know what I was doing but because I have it's great I've, I've, I've gained a lot of knowledge I know very specifically like what is the least amount of stuff you can get away with carrying around with you but still having your life be comfortable and everything so I do have quite a lot of history now as far as my expectations for this time having done a bit of van lighting and a lot of traveling I realized that I do not want to live permanently on the road no I really don't it is 
stressful and it gets old and it gets tiring and it's also can get expensive like van lifing is not necessarily super cheap it's really not um so my goals and desires is not ever to live permanently in a van what i why i am outfitting von the adventure van is specifically that to go on adventures to go be able to be comfortable. I mean, I do a lot of camping either way, so be able to do a lot of camping, being able to come to places like Tennessee and 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 be comfortable getting here, but then once I'm here, I'm able to spread out and create my own little life and room and everything where I go. And that way, I'm able to find a really nice balance because if you watch very many other van life or YouTubers, you'll see that they get burnt out, they get tired, they talk about, especially the ones that are city dwellers, like, I have no desire just to park on right, random city streets forever in my van just trying not to get noticed. Like, that's just not appealing and you wind up having to stay in your car all the time. I like to, now I do, um, now don't, don't get me wrong, I do do a little like subversive um, camping here and there like in the cities and stuff, but for the most part I like to be in campgrounds or there's free camp spots you can find online or you know, people's driveways, someplace where I can spread out and feel comfortable and safe. You know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a single female traveler traveling alone, so making sure that I park places that are safe are very important. I don't want to go on and on, but I guess I just want to let you guys know that you're never going to see me permanent forever van lifing because that's not my goal. I don't want to do it. It's exhausting. And honestly, I like to be able to have space. I like to be able to not wear flip flops in every single shower that I take, which is what you have to do in a lot of these public showers and stuff like that. And um, also, you know, I am in a minivan on purpose because I didn't want a big giant camper van. My thing is I want to be able to travel anywhere. Like I want to be able to get my car into a parking garage and navigate through city streets and stealth camp and that kind of thing when I need to. I don't want to have some big giant camper that is very obvious and difficult to get around and all that. So for all those reasons, you know, I this is the way that I'm developing my little van life. So I'm going to have, I, I call it partial van life and I'll be doing this for years. I mean, this is what I did for years and years and years before I moved to Hawaii. And so now that I'm back, I am so ready to get on the road and get traveling and visit friends and family and just do have all kinds of different experiences where I am staying in the van a lot, but not like every single night of every single month forever because that gets really exhausting let me tell you i like to keep my van life fun and adventurous and exploratory and you know new and fresh because i definitely <laughs> do believe that variety is the spice of life make sure you pop that subscribe button so i'll see you next time